Hey guys, welcome back to The Debate Art. I'm Grace and today we're going to do a spoiler review of Only Murders in a Building, Season 4, Episode 4, The Stunt Man. So our friend Emily, who isn't here today, is going to be away on holiday for quite a while, but she will be back soon, so it would be great to have her on board for these reviews again. But in the meantime, for this episode, Charles, Oliver and Mabel delve into the particular universe of stunt people they encounter a suspect with an incredible familiar face before we start please make sure you like subscribe and hit that notification bell leave a comment down below on your thoughts and theories of the episode and yeah let's get straight into it we first see charles in a gray mist following Saz, who appeared with a gunshot wound in her chest and we found out that he was just dreaming and i think this symbolizes charles's guilt over death and how he's still trying to find closure and still trying to understand what happened to her and he still feels quite no he still feels very bad for what happened to her the trio continue investigating in the morning where oliver is still a bit cranky and sleepy which makes him quite funny in some sense but oliver later tells the others that Loretta has become a bit more successful in Hollywood after checking her Instagram and seeing a pic of her with a male arm around her. While I know Oliver shouldn't be jealous and should trust Loretta since I think she is a very good woman and a very caring um, girlfriend, I do kind of understand from his point of view. As we all know that when we're dating someone famous, they do tend to get a bit more attention through the paparazzi or the public like articles and everything. And they might possibly do things in filming that might make their partner a bit uncomfortable. Like if you think about how Ryan Reynolds feels whenever he sees his wife, Blake, kissing that guy from New on Gossip Girl. I'm sorry, I haven't seen the show and I don't know the character's name, but I think you get the idea. The gang quickly learned that Saz follows Loretta on Instagram and they found her account and her last post on the day she died, which is at a bar. Meanwhile, Oliver creates a fake Instagram account to follow Loretta, which Mabel points out, and I think we all agree is a huge bad move, since we should trust our partners, and if we do have issues, talk to talk about it. And it was kind of strange to me, since Oliver didn't know how to work on his iPad, how to decrease the brightness, like an old granddad. So hearing Oliver making a fake Instagram account is beyond me. They visit a bar for stunt people called Concussions, which is actually a really good looking bar. They all tried to ask around about Saz, but the stunt actors didn't speak because they believe that the trio are only investigating a death for the podcast. Which I understand because while we know Charles and Oliver and Mabel are doing this investigation for the good of their hearts, others will see it as a way to make profit. Like if you can look back at some of the crime documentaries you've watched in the past, they may be good for expressing someone's story and exploring like hidden truths and mysteries. People who do make these documentaries are making like a good amount of money out of them. So there is a good and bad way of seeing this which reminds me if you do like crime documentaries you can check out my non-spoiler view of unsolved mysteries on netflix it's really cool i'll definitely recommend it now let's head straight to the craziest part of the episode we see a customer jumping out from the bathroom and we look down over his face and it was poor freaking rudd like what the hell ben is alive Again? Honestly, these writers need to make up their minds about who's living and who's dying. I mean, come on, that's just a bit confusing. But it turns out that Ben's, that this is not the Ben we knew from season three. This is Ben's stunt double, who apparently is Irish and is a bit crazy. And surprisingly, Paul does a freaking good job on the accent. If anyone here is Irish, please leave, please leave a comment down below to tell me if you think Paul has done a pretty good job on the accent. So Irish Ben was angry at first because he said that he lost everything after, after Ben died in season three. But he became friendly and helpful and took Charles to the back room where Saz was last seen. Not to mention he's a bit mental and the woman there who i thought was the one on the on the ham radio from last week but she was a masseuse in a way i think who treat stunt actors to release 
pain from their body. We learned that Saz was in a lot of pain and she was excited about retiring and getting to a new career. And, and she also had a difficult relationship in her life. Now that makes me feel sad because we realize how much effort the stunt doubles go through to make a scene look amazing with action or violence. But it became more sad to learn that Saz was in a lot of pain and she kept it a secret from Charles. I mean, honestly, no wonder Charles feels so bad now. And he believes that the difficult relationship shit the doctor mentioned in Saz's life was him. However, I think it might be someone else because they have a close relationship and I can't see Saz talking bad about Charles. Meanwhile, Mabel asks how Howard to stay in Donkoff's apartment to draw him back home. However, Howard was tempted to leave for an audition for the podcast film. While I am annoyed that Howard did do that, I do think he does get taken advantage during the show like last season he helped Oliver with his play and now he just wants to be more involved with something unique like what the others are doing because who wants to be in his position he wants to have his own podcast and no one is there to help him and in a sad funny way he's alone with a pig which can save you money if you want to have some bacon for breakfast Mabel does go back to the apartment and discover that the West Side gang are already there and they soon revealed a file to Mabel showing that they are participating in an illegal sub subletting of the apartments for cheaper rent. They give um, Professor Donkoff $200 a month to stay in the apartments and we learn that the woman th who threatened the trio in the last week's episode on the ham radio was actually christmas guy's ex-girlfriend who has some anger issues and maybe a bit mentally unwell i'm not quite sure but yeah so they're technically in the clear but i'm still not convinced if they might be hiding something or someone and they might still be involved with sass's murder as part of his gratitude towards sass and her career charles decided to help set up a a stunt doubles funeral by laying on a pool table and pretending to be Saz at her funeral, which is really touchy, I must say. Irish Ben gives a little speech and everyone came around and saying the little bits of Saz about how much they will miss her. But what really shocked me is when they started to smash bottles at Charles's head. I mean, I did not see that coming, but for some reason it was really funny. And I think they use like film props that stunt doubles use on set when they're going to do a bit of action. Then it became more crazy when Irish Ben whack a real bottle at Charles's head, like knocking him unconscious. I'm like, oh my god, that has got to her. It was like right in the center. Ouch. And then suddenly everybody started fighting each other, like bang, bang, bang. It just became weak, became crazy, but funny because everyone was doing like just hitting each other, like hitting with a chair or someone jumping on top of each other. But Irish Ben said that this is exactly what Saz would have wanted. And you know what? I think we wanted that too. Now, if you recall, during this episode, we see Charles's dreams and vision of him chasing Saz in a foggy area. And she keeps saying paradise. Now, at first, I thought she meant that she was finally heading off to paradise, a.k.a. heaven. But in his final dream on the set of Brazos, we see Saz telling him that she dreams of building her stunt academy and that was her paradise. Near the end, the trio visit the same location from Charles's dream and discover someone was in a rundown building. When they enter, it was Bev Mellon from the Paramount studio and immediately threats him with a gun. And that is the end of episode four. So in last week's episode, I mentioned I mentioned how I felt like we won't gain much from this early of the season. Like, I felt like there was nothing much going on. However, in this episode, it became much more interesting, which I'm really pleased about. First, we got Jan out of prison. Then we got the mystery of the West Side Weirdos. And now we got Bev, a producer who is threatening the trio with a gun. I'm really enjoying how we 
how we, the audience, get to explore a new aspect of the acting industry. We get to learn more about the stunt double departments and um, get to appreciate them more because we do forget how important stunt double actors are and we don't give them much attention. So I am very pleased that we get to learn more about the depths of their career and how brilliant they are in doing their jobs. I am slightly annoyed that the movie actors Eugene, Ava and Zach weren't part of this episode since I thought they were want to be more involved and try and understand their characters and get more excited about the case but hopefully we get to see more of them in the later episodes. For theories, I'm, not, I'm now thinking this is definitely someone who is working in the filming crew. I was thinking that it might be um, a group effort kill by the West Side Weirdos but I'm not too sure anymore. In the last se season, the killers revealed to be someone who was quite quiet in the background and had a friendly personality at first. So I'm thinking it could be Marshall P. Pope, the scriptwriter for the film. I have no idea what the motive could be, but hell, if I was right in the last season, I could be right for this season. I also want to say thank you so much for those who have commented their theories. So at kkyle594, thank you so much for your theory about Scott Peculiar. That is an interesting idea and it would make sense if he wanted Charles to be dead so Saz would have had to work for him instead. And also Saz faking our own death, that is a big leap but it's still quite interesting. Next at PS, I love you. Love you, 1964. I think you're on something there. I think someone from the police department might be involved again because it is strange that Detective Williams is off from this case like before and someone who works in the police department might know how to shoot with a sniper gun. So that is pretty interesting there. And finally, at 117 Derek, I'm with you on this one because they still haven't revealed who that person is in the photo frame yet. So it will be interesting to learn. And one last thing, I want to say hello to America. So for next week's episode, season four, episode five, adaptation, the trio face against a collection of individuals who deceive, manipulate, and threaten as a second nature, a Hollywood cast crew. So we might definitely dive into the roots of all the new characters we have seen so far, from the neighbours to the film crew, and maybe the actors as well. We could also see the darker side of the film industry. That is a big step for the show to take, but it would be interesting to learn. So guys, that's my review today of Only Murders in the Building. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave more theories and thoughts down below in the comments. We would love to hear more of them. They are brilliant. They're amazing. Love to hear more. Before you leave though, please make sure you like, subscribe and hit that notification bell. You can check out our other reviews that we've done in the past from season two, season three. We also done reviews of other shows and films, Marvel, Disney, so much games, pranks, check them out guys on our channel. You can also follow us on Instagram and Twitter. If you do, we'll follow you back, that's a promise. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time. Bye.